Order perspective here, real quick, okay? We're gonna start over here. Lower the rating, please, so you guys can get the full gist of it. Get my good side. Gotcha. Every side's good, Mr. C. Every I can't. I posted them on the YouTube page and I shared it. I posted them on the YouTube page and I shared it. Because I can't post it on the group me. Oh, it's only 30 second videos. Quickly. There we go. Because we have 10 minutes before we can start um, open gloving. Fine, fine, fine. All right. All right. I'm going to go over the basic uh, urinary catheters. These are urethral catheters, urinary catheters. You have the Red Robinson. Okay. It's um, made out of latex. It's used for draining the bladder only. It does not connect to a bag. It's also called a straight catheter or an in and out catheter. That's it. Okay. The doctor will say, can you please straight cast the patient? That's what they call it, All right? Second one, most common, this is your Foley catheter. It's your two-way Foley catheter. Comes in different sizes. You have different sizes of balloon, different diameters and French sizes. Has two lumens. One is to connect to the drainage bag. One is to inflate the cover balloon. And you put saline, sterile water or sterile saline through a syringe to inflate the balloon, okay? Making this... Ooh. Making this a self-retaining catheter mm -hmm. or indwelling catheter. This is a non-retaining, retaining. And along with this one, you have the caude, the multi-eyed, and the whistle tip. They're, the tips are different here. Okay, doesn't matter what Raul said. Just kidding, Raul. <laughs> All right. All right. Then you have the another urinary catheter, the three-way Foley. Yours for urology. As a cuff, except the cuff is bigger, usually 230 cc's. Then it's put to the urethra when they do bladder surgery or prostate surgery when they go above the pubic bone into the bladder, okay? One end is to inflate the balloon, one is to attach to the Foley bag, and one is to irrigate uh, the bladder using a piston syringe, okay? So that's your three-way self-regaining all right, then we go into this catheter. This is called a Malacot um, catheter. It also uses a drain, okay? And it drains urine directly from the bladder, open bladder. Does not go through the urethra. <laughs> Let it be known. It will not fit, okay? All right. Um, so if they're going to do urology <laughs> prostatectomy, they use a urethral one and a suprapubic catheter to keep the bladder decompressed. The other type of this one is called a mushroom or peaser. It looks like a mushroom at the end, and they're pretty much used for the same thing. Um, and these are also used for gastrostomy for a feeding tube. And they put a feeding tube into the stomach to feed a patient that can't eat, okay? All right. So, this is the same as this, except it's a smaller one, doctor's preference, okay? Thank you. Then you have this one here, kind of goes along with this one. This is a non-latex one, okay? And if the doctor is putting in a catheter and the patient's latex allergies, has latex allergies, he rather than uses this um, latex one, he's going to use this one. It's made out of silicone and it is not in latex. It does the same thing, it's a two-way Foley. Same thing with a Red Robinson. Patient is allergic to latex, they'll use a Robinson catheter that looks just like this one, except this single lumen. You understand everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna move on. This is a not a urethral catheter, but a ureteral catheter. These are used to splint the ureters. They have to go to the urethra with the scope, sister scope, to put ure ureteral catheters into the ureters when they're diagnosing stones and stuff like that. Urologists will put that in, okay? So, um, but this is a T-tube. Okay, we're not going to go in any particular order here. Um, a T-tube, one that would be smaller than this, obviously, is used for a common duct exploration surgery when they remove the gallbladder. So after they remove stones or they, they're going to close the, the uh, common bile duct, they put this T-part, one up, one down inside, and this gets exteriorized, connects to a bile bag temporarily. Okay? So this is for... for um, gallbladder surgery for cholangiograms when they're doing common duct exploration, checking for stone, okay? All right, this is a Penrose drain. It comes in different sizes. Happens to be a one inch, there's a three quarter inch, half inch, quarter inch, okay? Um, it drains by capillary action. Obviously, it does not have a collecting device, so it'll just wet the dressings. That's how it, by passive drainage, okay? 
capillary action or wicking action, the same as a, a cigarette would have a, a gauze to the lumen, but they both drain the same way. Understand that? Okay. So that's your Penrose drain. When you hand it to the surgeon, it's always handed moist and in saline. Always in saline. All right. Um, this is an endotracheal tube used for general anesthesia. It has a cuffer balloon that the anesthesiologist will inflate to intubate the patient uh, when they're unconscious. So they can put them in a respirator breathing tube. When they're ready to extubate the patient after surgery to relieve the secretion so there's no collection device, the doctor will use, the anesthesiologist will use a suction catheter that connects the suction to relieve the secretion from inside the ET tube. Understand that, everybody? Suction catheter, okay? There's gonna be some matching on the test on Monday. I'm gonna put the names of all these and matching, and then the terminology next week, you're gonna put it on the line. If I say, use the relief of suction from the ET tube, it's a suction catheter, okay? I'm right, putting next to so you guys remember. Is this helping? Yeah. Okay. These are called airway tubes. Okay. That's actually airway tube also, but this is used after anesthesia when they're going to transport the patient. When the patient's having difficulties breathing, this is oral pharyngeal, goes in the mouth, comes out of this, comes out of the lips, and this one that goes through the nose when there's surgery of the mouth. Okay. And it opens the airway so the patient can breathe temporarily. That's after anesthesia. All right. Um, I kind of skipped this one. Sorry for the people that are videotaping. Uh, instead of using an endotracheal tube, the anesthesiologist may choose to use a, a, a laryngeal mask. Okay, this when if you remove the air from this, then it will collapse like that. It's not working. It's not working. So. This is inserted into the mouth, goes down into the into the throat, and it covers the top of the trachea. You know where the larynx is, this sticks out of the mouth, and then they ventilate the patient through here. Put them on a respirator, okay? And it's it prevents from irritating the trachea because this tube literally goes into the trachea. You understand that? Mm -hmm. And this one goes on top of the trachea. So it's a lot smoother intubation. Patients do not have that sore throat afterwards. Okay, all right, so this is, there, it's a, also for general anesthesia like this, and there are also suction secretions from there with a suction catheter, it's called a laryngeal mask, okay? So oropharyngeal, and there's a nasopharyngeal to open the airway, and this one actually pushes the tongue back so the patient does not choke. All right, this is called a uh, Fogarty embolectomy catheter to remove stones or blood clots from vessels or ducts. This is a little wire inside called a stylet. So when you give it to the surgeon, make sure the stylet is inside, okay? It makes it a little more rigid. And then when the doctor's ready to use it, he'll remove the stylet. He'll get a one cc syringe, which I have in here. So you'll have this in your sterile field. Because these are for vascular procedures, right? You pull back, this is a one cc syringe, okay? and the, the surgeon will be doing this. <clears throat> puts it at the tip, and he inflates a balloon like that, and then he pulls back, and he brings out anything from that duct or vessel. That makes sense? That's like, by, like AD. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So by doing that, you're filling the inside lumen of that vessel, so as they pull it back, he's gonna trap anything in its path to remove it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Fogarty embolectomy catheter. Takes only one cc of air, okay? Now somebody put the stylet back in there, please, so that all thanks. All right, and put it in here when you're done. All right, let's go over drains really quick. This is called a J Jackson Pratt drain, JP drain. This is the part that goes into the wound. This gets exteriorized, okay? Uh, usually through a separate stab wound, and then you activate it by, oops, that thing came out, by squeezing, hold on. we'll put it back on. You squeeze it, and then you put this goes on top of this after the incision is closed, like that, and let me collapse this. So this is gonna be inside. So that's gonna stay collapsed like this. And it starts sucking out fluid and blood, right? Mm -hmm. During the next you know, hours or so. And when it gets full, then you're gonna see it inflate like this, and it's gonna be filled and it holds 100 cc's of how fluid. How quickly It, it depends how much bleeding there is. Could be an hour, could be 24 hours. So that's a JP, 
Jackson Pratt, and the other one the company makes is called a Blake Train.